Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, guys, I tried to load a video earlier, and next thing I know, I get a bunch of messages that uh, no one can hear the video until towards the end. I guess, like one person pointed out, I must have had my finger over the sound button there. Uh, I was actually at a conference today in Prague. Uh, there was uh, supposed to be uh, Fritz uh, was speaking there, and as well as David Icke. Um, and I know, David, uh, we, have, we have a similar interest when it comes to exposing the Vatican and the Illuminati, so I wanted to just hear what he had to say and uh, spoke with his son a little bit as well. And hopefully we'll be able to get David on here in the next week or so to talk about the Syrian conflict as well as uh, Rome's major play in the scheme of things that's going on with, new, with the New World Order. Uh, I think he's got some very interesting insights when it comes to that, and also be interviewing with uh, uh, Fritz as well. Uh, and um, I, I, I don't want to try to pronounce Fritz's name or last name right now because I know I'll mess it up. So, so anyway, it's very. We had a nice time with uh, Fritz this afternoon. He's. I thought he was speaking today, but he's actually speaking tomorrow. And uh, so we'll, we'll actually cover some of his uh, uh, talk on the Illuminati as well and share some of that with you. We had lunch with him today. Uh, very insightful uh, man on the Illuminati and the different places and phases that the Illuminati is in. So interested in hearing what he has to say this weekend. Uh, what I wanted to bring to your attention, though, was what is going on at the United Nations uh, Security Council in the big round meeting right there, which you see on your screen right there. Uh, it is another ditch effort by the United States to try to force a no-fly zone over Syria. Of course, they're trying to just say over Aleppo. Uh, and, of course, Russia vetoed it with every, every right to do so because as the uh, Russian uh, uh, foreign minister there to the United Nations made a clear case that the rebels are still shelling from eastern Aleppo into the we into western Aleppo, and this is one of the reasons why Russia has continued to do the the, the bombing campaigns. But of course, uh, we get all kinds of propaganda uh, coming out of the media from the West, Western media backed uh, with different uh, groups there that the U.S. government is backing and. Uh, and, and of course, yes, there are innocent people dying. I do agree with that. But they're, when they give the totals, it's another thing that I find this very interesting is when the United States gives a total uh, of how many people have died in Aleppo since this bombing has begun, uh, whether the number be 100, 200, or 300, whatever the case may be, they lump it all into one group, but they're not telling you how many of those were actually killed by the U.S.-backed rebels that are shelling uh, the Dickens out of uh, the western side of Aleppo, nor do they want to tell you about the fact that they're being, that they're being uh, held against their will inside of eastern Aleppo as hostages and, and uh, their families are being shot and murdered. That's part of the death toll. But you know what's interesting? John Kerry is not going to separate that, is he? And neither is the State Department either. John Kirby is not going to tell you the truth on that one either. Why? Because everything's a political agenda. They really are they're there to topple Bashar al-Assad and get him out of government there. You know why? Because it's not it's not suiting the agenda that they have part of the new world order. Uh, that's got to be dealt with, and so therefore, well, just forget it. You know, quite frankly, if the United States had stayed out of this war here, um, which they were so nicely doing, they had already trained ISIS, had them doing a great job taking over the country and uh, set back, and uh, even though they were claiming they were attacking ISIS, John Kerry's own words were, were pretty much... Uh, a slap in the face. In fact, speaking of, uh, of John Kerry's words there, let me just quickly pull you over here to Twitter. Uh, a friend of ours here that has a Twitter page there that we follow, um, uh, Techno, Techno Collide, a uh, very interesting um, uh, brother that has this page here. He does a lot of research on his uh, page. So if you ever want to follow a Twitter account, Techno Collide is a very good one to follow. Someone that takes the time to really uh, authenticate his, uh, his stories. He actually pulls up what John Kerry says uh, from the leaked uh, recording conversation that John Kerry did in New York with, with some of the Syrian people there that have been rescued out of Syria thanks to Washington there. The reason Russia came in is because ISIL was getting stronger. 
was threatening the possibility of going to Damascus and so forth. That's why Russia came in. We know that this was, was growing. We were watching. We saw that Daesh was growing in strength and we thought Assad would, uh, was threatened. But instead of negotiating, he got Putin to support him. That's exactly right. It's exactly what he did. Well, Putin was, a, uh, excuse me, uh, President Bashar al-Assad was a smart man. Why would you want to negotiate with a regime that is bent on your destruction to begin with? I guess that gives something to think about when we think of the scripture there where it says in Daniel there that tidings out of the east and out of the north will trouble him. Uh, anyway. Another thought altogether, but uh, one other thing too, speaking of the United States, so, con so condemning of Russia and the airstrikes, but then again, not telling the truth that their own backed rebels are the cause of uh, the majority of these deaths. Not, and also, many times when they report the hospitals are being destroyed, uh, they blame it on Russia, but there's no proof that Russia did it. It could have been the, their own forces there. Uh, the moderate rebels, they're really good at uh, blowing things up just so they can blame it on somebody else. As John Kerry asked, he wanted, he said, we are desperately trying to find video of Russian or Syrian planes that have actually bombed any of these things, and we can't find any. You know why? Maybe it's because they're not the ones dropping the bombs on the hospitals in the first place. Maybe it's your own little backed rebels over there. Uh, Mr. Washington, D.C., uh, President Obama and John Kerry. Maybe it's your little thugs that you've got in there. you got so many you can't control them and they're completely out of control. You started with ISIS and now you've ended up with about 40 different radical groups in there. And they're slinging bombs every which direction you can think of. And, you know, President Putin, let me just say something to you, my dear brother. Don't forget. You got Turkey in there that claims to be an ally to you that is going to stab you right in the back when the time comes. Wait until they go to take and launch an attack. When, they, when, when the U.S. finally says, we're not going by the U.N. Security Council and we're not going to go by nobody else and they're going to grab Britain by the coattail and say, let's go bomb these guys. Turkey will be right there with them. You can believe it. Anyway, so here is the uh, White House's dirty uh, laundry as well. They're backing and arming and giving plenty of weapons to, uh, to the Saudis there. And what are the Saudis doing with their weapons? Death toll from Saudi airstrike on Yemeni funeral ceremony exceeds 200. Well, I mean, you can't even bury the dead over there in Yemen without uh, having somebody go blow everybody up from the Saudi side. And you know, I've seen, I've seen the videos there that uh, Vanessa Bealey posted where the white helmets, you know, they're, they're, they're smacking around the Syrian guys and, 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 and everything is all about, uh, you know, a, a religious war. He says, oh, you attack the Sunnis, you, 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 you Shiites, you're attacking the Sunnis. When are we ever going to come to a place that... We, on this earth, we are brothers and sisters. We, we are humanity as a whole. When are we going to come to that place where every human life matters? You know, I don't guess it's ever going to happen so long as everybody runs around saying they're killing them because... You know, they're a Sunni or a Shiite. You know, that reminds me of the days of, uh, of back in um, uh, when the Catholics and the Protestants in Ireland were killing each other constantly just because they didn't like the religion they belonged to. Jeez. I, I, don't, I don't know what to think. I really don't. No wonder why. If you really think about it, and I know this is on a biblical point, a biblical note here, but when Revelation speaks of two witnesses, that they will come. Uh, and it's interesting because uh, in Obadiah, the prophet Obadiah says that deliverers will come up on Mount Zion and will judge the Mount of Esau. Revelation says two witnesses will come. Isn't it interesting? Witnesses. What are they a witness of? Maybe they're a witness of what's right and wrong, what's good and evil. They don't, it doesn't even say two Jews will come. 
It doesn't say two Christians will come. It doesn't say two Baptists will come or two Pentecostals will come or two Muslims will come. It says two witnesses will come. Obadiah says deliverers, plural. So it's more than one comes. Maybe it's referring to the two. And of course, it says there in Revelation that the two witnesses are the two olive branches that stand on either side of the golden lampstand. I just think it's interesting that when you think of the word witnesses, they're coming to witness something that they have seen, something that they know. It might be altogether different from what we're thinking. I know it's going to be something amazing because it causes the Jewish people to something to happen among them to where even the people of the nations will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, we hear that that God is with you. You know, for the Jews, to, for, the, for the people of the nations, and it doesn't single them out and says Christians. It doesn't say Christians either. You ever notice that? It doesn't say the Christians will take all of the skirt of the hymns of the Jews. No, the Gentiles, the nations, maybe both Arab and Jews, may, may, maybe Arabs, Jews, Christians, pe people of all the nations will take all of the skirt of him that's a Jew and say, we hear that God is with you. Show us your ways. Now, it can't be the ways they have right now because if that were the case, then it would already be, there would be no need for these two witnesses to come or, or, or whoever these are that, that you know, it, there would be no need of it. Something revolutionary happens, though, in Israel that will cause the people of the world to say, we hear now, now God is with you. Not when Israel became a nation in 1948. You know, I, I, you have to remember, I'm not for political Zionism. I believe, though, that God has used something that was evil for a good purpose, and that was to bring the children of Israel back to their homeland, waiting for that day that that scripture could be fulfilled. We hear God is with you. Something will happen. And, and for that to happen as well, they say, show us your ways. It can't be the 613 laws either. No, it can't be that. If that were the case, then the Messianic people wouldn't need to even take hold of the skirt of the Jew because they already say, we already know those ways. No, the nations say, show us your ways. We hear God is with you. It's something has differently has happened. Maybe it's a restoration back to what humanity had all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You ever think about that? Maybe God restores the word so pure that whether you're a Jew, an Arab, a Muslim, uh, whatever religion, Buddhist, Zen, you know, it won't be each man has his own religion. No, I don't, I'm not saying that. But the thing is, is that there's something, the love of God is so great that when the nations see that something has happened to those Jewish people in their homeland, that the people of the nations say, we see God is with you. Hmm. Something to think about. Anyway, then maybe all this world wars and things will come to an end that we're seeing here. Then, then maybe we won't see the United States government arming all the nations just to go out and kill their brother. What good is it doing? I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Gareth Tov.